Hello and welcome to this video on merging and editing panoramic images in Affinity Photo 2. Panoramic images, or stitches as they are sometimes known, are a way to capture a much wider angle of view by merging together several overlapping images. Most smartphones and a handful of regular cameras can shoot and blend panoramic images entirely in camera. But to get better quality and more control, it's usual to shoot the frames individually and then merge them in software like Affinity Photo 2. Merging panoramas is really very easy and Affinity Photo 2 has some clever editing tools to make the results even more seamless. We'll see how these work in this video, but first some general pointers about shooting panoramas. There are two approaches you can take, quick and dirty or detailed and technical. The quick and dirty approach is to shoot your panoramic frames handheld and judge the overlap by eye. It should be around 30%. As long as you keep the horizon level and the exposure the same, the results will be great. Manual exposure is a good idea just to avoid any exposure variations. You should also check the focus is fixed on the same object or distance for each frame. If you want to do the job properly, you will use a tripod. Ideally, one with a panoramic head that lets you slide the camera back and forth so that it pans around the lens's optical center. This can help reduce any parallax error with objects in the foreground. Panorama experts will also suggest tilting the camera by 90 degrees to get a taller panorama and higher resolution. You might think there will be enough resolution already, but actually this can help reduce converging vertical effects with buildings and does give you more leeway with cropping. For our example though, we've used a quick and dirty approach and as you'll see, this can still yield excellent results in Affinity Photo. The first step is to use the File New Panorama menu command. You will then be presented with the dialog for adding your individual panoramic frames. You can use JPEG or RAW files, but if you opt for RAW, you should run them through the Develop Persona first to make sure basic adjustments are carried out and to apply lens correction profiles where needed. We've used JPEGs because the exposures look fine and lens corrections have already been carried out in camera. So how many frames do you need? It's tempting to shoot a lot of frames for the widest panorama possible, but this does produce ever more extreme letterbox image formats, which quickly become impractical. Here we're merging seven horizontal frames and you'll see as we go along how wide a panorama this creates. Once you've checked your images to make sure you have the whole series and with no gaps or extras, hit the Stitch Panorama button. This doesn't carry out the final merge process. Instead, it simply displays a preview of the stitched image in the panel on the right. It's a chance to check the outcome before committing to the full merge process. If you're happy with the preview, click the OK button to start the merge. The result might look a little rough when it first appears in a panorama workspace, but don't worry. This is just the alignment phase. Wait a few moments longer and you'll get the fully merged image and our shot now shows perfectly clean, seamless joins. We can see one tiny issue right in the centre where the corner of a building has some strange dark ghosting alongside. We can fix this with the Add to Source Image Mask tool in the toolbar on the left. With this selected, you can click on different areas of the image to select individual frames and see how they've been merged. It looks like our ghosting appears right on the join between two frames, so we'll simply select the middle frame and use the tool to paint over that area. In effect, we're telling Affinity Photo to extend the merge boundary away from the corner of the building. Affinity Photo takes a moment to re-render the panorama and the result is now perfect. We don't have any alignment to choose with our panorama, but there is a tool to fix this if we did. It's called the Transform Source Image Tool, and this is on the left tools panel too. With this selected, we can click on different areas of the panorama to select the image used for that section, then drag the corner control points to change its perspective or apply transformations to make it line up with the next frame. Actually though, we don't need to do a thing. You can see from the transformations already applied to these frames just how sophisticated Affinity Photo's panorama merge process actually is correcting perspective changes automatically and lining up these frames perfectly. 
Now, the other very obvious issue with this panorama is the irregular transparent areas around the outside. You get this with any panorama stitching process, and the usual solution is to manually crop out the missing areas. But Affinity Photo has a clever feature to save this manual cropping step and maximise the image area saved. All you need to do is select the Crop Tool from the Tools panel on the left and then the Crop to Opaque button on the top toolbar. Affinity Photo will automatically crop the excess but keep the largest image area possible. Even here though, you can see that quite a lot of the image has been lost and there is another solution that works particularly well on images with areas of even tone or texture at the edges. This time we don't use the crop tool at all. Instead we click on the In Paint Missing Areas button on the top toolbar to activate it. You won't see anything just yet as the In Paint Missing Areas feature is only applied as the panorama is rendered. So when you've done any other editing you want to do, click the Apply button. This renders the finished panorama and opens it in a regular photo persona for any further editing. So here's our fully rendered panorama. Affinity Photo has used the in painting tool to fill in those blank areas around the edges and it's been so successful that you can't even see where it's been working. Our finished panorama is completely seamless with no visible joints and perfect exposure smoothing. That's quite an achievement given that it was shot handheld by eye. We can see one thing though. The building in the centre appears to be leaning towards the left and this is nothing to do with Affinity Photo's panorama merge process but the fact that we tilted the camera upwards slightly to take the sequence. You can see that the horizon is not central. Perspective glitches like this are almost inevitable with our quick and dirty panorama shooting style. But there is an easy fix. We're going to be using Affinity Photo 2's new live mesh warp filter to correct the skew in this one small area and with the live filter layer that we can come back to to re-edit later if we need to. Mesh warps aren't like regular perspective transform tools because they're designed to correct specific problem areas, not the whole image. In this instance, we just need to create a simple four point mesh roughly around our problem area, then drag the top nodes to the right to correct it. And that's our panorama finished. We did explain at the start that the more shots you take, the more extreme the letterbox effect with the panorama, so ours is probably a little wide to be practical. But we are already in one of the most powerful photo editors on the market, so what's the problem? We can simply use the crop tool to create a panorama of whatever width we want, and then export the photo as a new image. To find out more about Affinity Photo, visit affinity.serif.com. Dot com. That's it, and thanks for watching.